As a foot soldier, you could be called upon to participate in Helleborn operations. In order to ensure the effectiveness of operations and the safety of all personnel concerned, it is essential that each soldier understand the procedures to follow, as well as what has to be done during each phase of the operation. A helicopter is an aircraft with many capabilities. It can maneuver in places where an airplane could not go without danger. It can climb and descend vertically and hover. These remarkable features make the helicopter indispensable for heliborne operations, for the transport of troops and equipment, and for surveillance. The helicopter also excels in search and rescue situations. Although it has great versatility, the helicopter has limitations and it is somewhat fragile. A helicopter requires more delicate flying maneuvers than an airplane. To begin with, it moves more slowly than a plane and burns greater quantities of fuel, which account for its limited range. What distinguishes the helicopter from other types of aircraft is its means of propulsion. We know that an airplane's wings are what provide it with lift. With a helicopter, this role is played by the rotor, a rotary wing made of several blades which turns horizontally above the aircraft. The rotor allows the aircraft to maneuver vertically, in other words, to climb and descend in a straight line. To move the aircraft forward or backward, or to execute a turn, the pilot tilts the rotor in the desired direction. This video is designed to help you better understand and put into practice the safety principles that apply to flying by helicopter. By following these principles, you will be able to accomplish your mission effectively, quickly, and most importantly, safely. In this first module, we will examine in detail the responsibilities of each soldier traveling by helicopter. These include preparations for boarding, procedures to follow when boarding the aircraft, safety considerations during flight, safety equipment, emergency procedures, and deplaning. The blades of the rotor pose the biggest danger for all. On a flat surface, the rotor's blades can droop to as low as 1.5 meters, and on a slope, this height may be even lower. The tail rotor also represents a danger. Always approach the helicopter from the front, head down and leaning forward. The helicopter's rotor can produce very strong gusts of wind. These can lift debris from the ground as well as equipment or clothing. So you have to protect your eyes and ensure that all clothing and lightweight equipment are securely fastened. Before boarding the helicopter, soldiers assemble in all-round defensive position, clear of the landing zone. On the order of the section commander, or his 2IC, each soldier must proceed as follows. Remove all headgear except your steel helmet. Fasten the chin strap on the helmet. Fasten all clothing and equipment. Check the safety devices on all explosive equipment. Carry out the safety procedures on your weapon. Engage the safety, remove the magazine, and check that there are no cartridges left in the chamber. Sheath your bayonet. Fold the bipod on your weapon. Fold the three-foot whip antenna and remove all other antennae. And finally, you must know the boarding order the side to board by, and your designated seat on board the helicopter. Generally, the CH-135 Twin Huey and the CH-146 Griffin helicopters each have nine seats. The front seat on the right-hand side is always reserved for the flight engineer, 
who's already on board the helicopter. Seat number four is occupied by the section commander. Seats number five and number six are sometimes removed to make room for equipment. The same is true for seats number seven and number eight. As mentioned earlier, because of the danger posed by the tail rotor, the access zone on the CH-135 Twin Huey and on the CH-146 Griffin is at the front of the aircraft, between the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock positions. On leaving all-round defensive positions, soldiers gather in front of the aircraft, beyond the reach of the rotor, in single file, according to the boarding order. At the crew's signal, they advance rapidly, heads down, leaning forward. As they approach the helicopter, the group splits in two. The section commander heads to his right, and the two IC to his left. In order to avoid getting too close to the tail rotor, never go further than the loading door. Helicopters can produce static electricity, so never touch the aircraft before it has actually touched the ground. The first in line opens the left door but stays on the ground to help with the loading. To open the sliding door, push the handle down, then slide the door towards the rear. The right door will be opened from the inside by the flight engineer. Rucksacks are stowed in the designated area behind the protective net between the cabin and the cockpit. Boarding is conducted according to the order established by the section commander. Each soldier will have an assigned seat. Remember that the front seat on the right-hand side is always reserved for the flight engineer and that the section commander always occupies seat number four. As soon as the soldiers are seated, they must buckle their seat belts. The helicopter will not take off before the flight engineer has confirmed that all seat belts have been securely fastened. Experience has taught us that this action, while simple, can lead to a critical loss of time. In some cases, flight engineers have had to help soldiers fasten their belts. In a combat situation, a delay of even a few seconds could be lethal. So it's essential that you become familiar with this device. Before sitting down, locate the belt and grasp both straps. You may also locate one of your partner's straps and hand it to him when he arrives. To fasten the belt, make sure that the hook is in the downward position. Insert one end into the other, and then bring the hook back by pushing it down all the way. When you are certain that your belt is securely fastened, signal a thumbs up to the section commander or to the flight engineer. You must hold your weapon between your legs, pointing up. The section commander and the flight engineer close the doors. In warm weather, the doors may be left open. But that decision belongs exclusively to the aircraft captain. During the flight, soldiers must remain seated with their seat belts fastened. The section commander and flight engineer wear headsets and are in direct contact with the pilot and co-pilot. Note that smoking is forbidden in the cabin, as well as within a 16 meter radius of the aircraft. If an emergency arises during the flight, soldiers must follow the flight engineer's instructions. We will examine the procedures to follow in this situation a little later in this video. The CH-135 and CH-146 helicopters are equipped with a number of safety devices. Two first aid kits, two fire extinguishers, a survival kit, a locator device called an ELT, a crash axe, and a stretcher. When flights take place over water, helicopters are equipped with life jackets and inflatable rafts.
Once the helicopter has landed, wait for the flight engineer's signal before beginning to deplane. At his signal, unfasten your seatbelt. The section commander and flight engineer open the doors. Exit the aircraft by the same side you boarded in reverse order. Each soldier retrieves a rucksack. At this point, soldiers shouldn't concern themselves with whether or not they're taking their own. Exit quickly, leaning forward, then lie down on your rucksack in the firing position. The section commander closes the door on his side of the aircraft. The flight engineer will close the other door. Soldiers then form two single lines perpendicular to the aircraft in the 9 to 10 o'clock and 2 to 3 o'clock positions. The first soldier in line must be at least 1.5 meters from the landing gear in full view of the pilot or co-pilot. This way the pilot or co-pilot will be able to make sure that all passengers have exited the aircraft before taking off again. Once you've left the aircraft, remember to protect your eyes, secure loose equipment, and never approach the rear of the helicopter. If there are other helicopters in the area, be careful to stay out of their danger zones as well. Before moving, troops should wait for the helicopter to take off. They should also wait for all other aircraft to leave the area. Then the troops can regroup in a defensive position according to the section commander's orders. Again, as in boarding the aircraft, every second counts. The speed, as well as the precision of this process, constitute an essential safety factor for the members of the Helleborn detachment, as well as for the crew of the helicopter. Deplaning from a hovering helicopter is only done when the aircraft captain decides that it is necessary. In such a case, the landing gear will be no higher than about one meter. Rucksacks are thrown from the aircraft. Be very careful when actually exiting the aircraft because the pilot has to keep the helicopter level. If the need to make an emergency landing arises, soldiers will be informed by the flight engineer and the section commander. Also, time permitting, the pilot will sound the alarm. Three rapid bursts. On receiving the signal, you must do the following. Tighten your seatbelt. Cross your arms on your knees while holding your weapon with one arm and bend forward as far as possible. Never leave the helicopter before the flight engineer has given the signal. When you do exit, keep your head down. If the evacuation cannot be carried out through the doors, use the emergency exits. Use the lever found at the bottom of the window to open the emergency exit. The window will fall inside the cabin. Let's review the safety procedures that each soldier must put into practice when involved in a mission on board a helicopter. Always approach the helicopter from the front, head down, leaning forward, and protecting your eyes. Know the preparations for boarding, as well as the boarding order and the seat assigned to you. When sitting down, fasten your seatbelt quickly and properly, and then give the thumbs up signal. Exit the helicopter only on the flight engineer's signal. The group should line up to the sides of the aircraft in full view of the pilot. Wait for the helicopter to take off before moving. The safety procedures that we've just examined are essential for the success of Helleborn operations. Each soldier must know them perfectly in order to ensure the safety of all concerned as well as the effectiveness of the operation. During the second part of this series, we will examine the responsibilities of the section commander.